What is GRE disorder? GRE disorder is a set of rare genetic diseases affecting the brain. Symptoms vary from person to person, but usually include physical and intellectual disabilities. Sometimes these disabilities are mild, but some people with GRE disorder aren't able to walk or talk, and they need help with all their daily activities. Many have epileptic seizures. Also common, symptoms related to vision, sleep, and digestion, as well as movement disorders and seizure-like storms or spells. So what's causing all this? Well, in people with GRE disorder, there's a spelling error in one of the GRIN, GRIA, GRIC, or GRID genes. These genes are numbered with names like GRIN2B and GRIA3. These genes contain the instructions to make brain receptors, tiny structures that help neurons to connect. When these receptors aren't working properly, the brain can be prone to epilepsy and can have a harder time learning and forming memories. Only a few thousand people have been diagnosed with GRE disorder, but there are probably tens of thousands still to be diagnosed. While there's no cure for GRE disorder, there are medicines that might help some patients, such as anti-seizure drugs. To learn more, visit CureGrin.org. So good morning, everyone, and welcome to the 2022 GRE virtual conference presented by Cure Grin and Grin Therapeutics. Um, what you just watched was the world premiere of our new video. We're making a series of, of four different um, explainer videos, uh, and that was the first in the series. Really excited about that and about the three more that are to come. Um, so as we get started, I wanted to ask you all um, to tell, uh, to share, so, so go into the chat. You may see two different chats, one in the Excel events portal and then one just in Zoom. We're gonna try um, for most of the conference to focus on the Zoom chat. So if you can go into the Zoom chat, make sure it's set to send a message to everyone and don't submit your answer yet. But um, if everyone can just go and type in a one word answer, about how they feel uh, about today, about the conference, just one word, and don't press enter yet. Um, I'll, I'll say when to enter, and we can make sure that uh, we'll, we'll kind of flood all of the answers up at the same time. So enter your answer in the Zoom chat now. Excited, optimistic, curious. Um, oh, there's a few excited, energized. Uh, so this is great, and uh, my word is excited. Um, and, and first, uh, I should I should introduce myself for those who don't know. I'm Keith MacArthur. I'm the CEO of Cure Grin Foundation and also um, the father to Bryson, my, my son, who is 15 and has a Grin 1 variant. Um, and the reason why I'm excited to be here today, two different reasons. One is just that I feel uh, really excited about the state that we're at in terms of where researches into cures and, and therapies. I feel like we're um, in a unique position where there's a lot of advances for rare diseases, both on the uh, pharmacological side, but also on the genetic therapy side. And we're gonna hear lots about that uh, through the two days of the conference. The other reason I'm really excited is that these kinds of conferences bring together people from um, so many different kinds of like varied people, right? So we've got um, we've got all these different stakeholders that come together for this conference. So there's patient families, there's researchers working at um, you know universities and hospitals. We've got doctors and uh, physiotherapists and other clinicians, and then we've got people from industry who are working, you know, with all of these groups to try to. Uh, develop cures and treatments for people living with GREE disorder. We also are bringing together people with all of these different genes. So when Cure Grin was founded, we were focusing on the GRIN genes. Um, but last year, as many of you know, we've expanded our reach and we're now focused on all of these different GREE genes and the AMPA, uh, the AMPA K9 and uh, Delta receptors, as well as the NMDA receptor. So there's a list of, of all of the genes that could be involved, the ones in bold are where we have uh, either found people or they found us um, who have 
single gene pathogenic variants. There's a couple others on here where we believe there are patients, where um, mm -hmm. researchers or clinicians uh, believe that they've seen patients, but um, we're, we're kind of highlighting the ones that have found their way to our community. And then we are also uh, bringing together people from many, many countries. Um, this is uh, uh, obviously a global disease and CureGrin is a, a globally focused foundation. We've got families all around the world and uh, I'm just thrilled to bring everybody together today. So we've got many stakeholders, uh, many genes, people in many countries, but they're all coming together with one goal. We're all focused on um, treatments and cures, on education, community, and support, and on creating a better life for people living with greed disorder and their families. And I wanna talk uh, about one example of one family um, that really the, the Greek community rallied around to help. Um, like many of you, when I started, um, you know, seeing pictures of what was going on in Ukraine and families fleeing, um, I really wondered, like, how would that affect a family like mine with a, a child in a wheelchair and, and so many um, different kinds of challenges? And what if we ran out of medicine? Um, and there was a family, uh, at least one Greek family living in Ukraine. Um, this is uh, the family. Uh, living in their, their basement, there was bombing going on around them. Um, the, the father was off fighting to protect his country. And, and um, this is something that uh, this mother, um, Nadia, wrote. Uh, and, and this was uh, the photo, at, and this was shared on the Grin 2B Foundation Facebook page. Um, she wrote, Today, embracing my sons, I wake up thinking I had a terrible dream. I opened my eyes and saw that I was in the basement, all sleeping together on the floor. Today, we can't leave the house. There are lights in all directions, security only in the shelter. We pray to God that the bomb does not hit our house because it will overwhelm us. Food and water supplies will suffice for a while. I don't know what will happen next. Um, so the family had, I think, two or three weeks of, of medicine. Um, were obviously scared for their lives, having particular challenges um, because of, of the son with um, grin 2 b and just didn't know how they could possibly um, get out of the country to safety as so many other Ukrainians were doing fleeing uh, to, to Poland and other countries nearby. Um, but the GRI community um, and especially the grin 2 b community really rallied around this family and um, were able to help them to escape from uh, their home in Ukraine and get to safety in Poland. This took um, an incredible amount of planning from a, a, a large group of, of associations and people. Um, but here's the family now um, in Poland. Again, this is from the Grin 2B Facebook page. The family's in Poland. They are um, safe. They still have obviously a lot of um, fears. The, um, the father is, is still fighting in the Ukraine. Um, they're away from their, their home and, and everything that they know. So the world has been turned upside down and I can't imagine how hard this still is for them, but um, at least they are now safe. And so um, we have a message to play from um, the mother here uh, that she wanted to share with you all. Всім привіт з Польщі від великої дружньої родини з України, яку ви всі врятували. Не відвернулися, не залишили в смертельній небезпеці. Дякую вам. Я безмежно вдячна міжнародному сообществу Грін за підтримку та допомогу. Завдяки вам ми в безпеці в Польщі. Завдяки вам ми живі. Я навіть не уявляю, як можливо такій родині, як наша, з дитиною-інвалідом, з особливими потребами, виїхати з зони бойових дій, де кожен крок міг бути останнім. Але завдяки вам, вашій роботі, ми в безпеці. Дякую за фінансову підтримку нашої родини. Безмежно дякую. Завдяки їй ми змогли в найтяжчий період війни, 
купити їжу для наших дітей. Завдяки фінансовій підтримці ми можемо перебувати в Польщі, купувати їжу та ліки нашим діткам. Дякую вам. Ви всі навіки ви залишитеся в моєму серці. Ви всі є героями. Ті, хто врятував велику дружню родину з України. Дякую вам за це. Дякую за складну операцію евакуації для нашої родини. Я не уявляю, яка це, яка це складна була робота. За це я вам безмежно вдячна. Ми щиро віримо, що цей жах, геноцид та тероризм закінчиться в Україні, що Україна переможе. Ми всі хочемо жити в Україні, ми всі хочемо працювати в Україні. Я щиро вірю, що скоро ми повернемося додому і будемо відбудовувати нашу красиву, цвітучу, нову і незалежну державу – Україну. Ми хочемо кохати і народжувати дітей в Україні. Ми хочемо жити вільними людьми. Це війна за мир. І ми в ній переможемо. Україна переможе. Слава Україні! Дякую вам! Um, so thank you so much uh, to everyone who was involved. This is something that um, Kjurgren wasn't really uh, directly involved in, but so many other people from across the, the Greek community came together. Um, so uh, thanks to all the individuals mentioned on the left and um, Liz, Hillary, Kasha, um, Mal Gorzata, Catherine, Barbara, and Sandra, and thanks to the three patient associations that were involved, Grin 2B Foundation, Grin 2B Europe, and Grin Patias in uh, the, the Spanish Foundation. And also thank you to Grin Therapeutics. Um, and we have a couple of reasons to thank Grin Therapeutics today. Not only did they play a huge role in helping this family, um, they're also our uh, title sponsor today. So, um, Thank you very much to, to Grin Therapeutics. They are uh, developing medicines. We're going to hear a little bit more about them in, in just a minute. Um, but just let me say that they have been uh, a fantastic organization um, for us to work with. They uh, really are taking the needs and desires of families and, and patients um, into account in, in everything that they do. Um, and I think this is something that isn't always common for uh, families working with biotech and pharma companies. So we're really grateful for that. I'm not saying this just because they're a sponsor. This is uh, this is entirely true. So, um, so I'm really grateful and want to hand, uh, oh, actually before I do, um, one more thing, which is that you, uh, you can also be a, a great hero. So there is a GoFundMe set up for the family in Ukraine. Um, they, they still uh, really need a lot of, of help and support. And so um, Denise, if, if you can, maybe you already did. Um, oh yeah, Denise shared the link in the chat there. So um, you can help this family there. So um, happy to introduce um, Bruce Alucher, who is the uh, president and CEO of Novardi Neuroscience, um, which is the parent company of Grin Therapeutics. So uh, Bruce, over to you. Thanks, Keith. And I presume everyone can hear me okay. Uh, it's, it's a pleasure to be with you all today. We thank you <clears throat> sincerely for involving us. And just as much as you all are focused from your perspective on managing your, your, your kids and your families uh, with, this, with these set of disorders, we, we are equally as focused in that, in that regard. And it does, take, it does take a village. So we, are, we view the community involvement to be absolutely critical in how we all succeed collectively in developing novel treatments for these patients. Um, it's rare in drug development where you have an opportunity to collaborate so closely and intimately with patients and families uh, to get their feedback on their experiences, have it inform pretty much everything we do. And we wanted to share with you some examples of how that kind of involvement 
translates into productivity in trying to establish, develop, and, and get approved medicines that can help uh, kids with grin-related disorders. And it is, um, it is with the community engagement that we're able to do all the good work that we are hoping to do. Uh, in other kinds of disorders uh, with larger patient populations, perhaps better understood, you do not see a level of community engagement, nor do you require it in many cases in order to develop drugs. But when you're dealing with a, a, this sort of condition, relatively new in terms of our understanding of it, and incredibly small in terms of the eligible patient population, it is critical that the community comes together, shares their experiences, allows us to understand through their eyes the natural history of these conditions, and it puts us in a position to develop medicines more effectively and in a more informed way. So we would, right off the top, just applaud all of your efforts and encourage you to continue to engage with one another, because it is true that while we parse the uh, disorders on a individual basis, we make a clear determination between the genetic uh, fingerprints of these disorders. There is a lot about these disorders that are similar. Uh, the, the, how the brain is functioning in the context of these disorders is similar in some cases. And the medicine that we are aiming to develop keys off of that theme, the similarities. Uh, it's critical to understand the differences, but when you can unify the differences, with a similarity that helps you understand one condition and the other through a single medicine, it is particularly exciting and incredibly helpful. But let me step back for just a moment and provide a very quick summary of who we are and what we do. So Nirvati Neurosciences is a biotechnology company that focuses on neurological, neuroscientific conditions. That is true across a number uh, of different neuropsych neuropsychiatric and neurological conditions. But our first subsidiary company, the most important company that we have underneath our umbrella is Grin Therapeutics. And the Grin Therapeutics team is like this with the Nervati team. We are effectively one organization. Every single day we collaborate amongst each other uh, to understand the science, to understand the clinical, uh, to understand how to operate a, a clinical trial and progress our efforts so that patients can have an opportunity to experience the medicine, the experimental medicine, and hopefully improve. And the unique thing about this particular disorder, the grin-related disorders, and then the subsets of those grin-related disorders, is that while the genetics are different, uh, what happens as a product of the genetic mutations, the genetic variants, is that the brain has a physiologic function that ensues that is awry, and that you heard about that in the, in the opening video. That could be seizures, it could be behavioral issues, sleep uh, cycle dysfunction or problems. And even though the underlying genetic mutation or genetic variant is different, it manifests in a very similar way across patients. So if you had an opportunity to develop an experimental drug that appreciated the nuances of each individual grin-related disorder, but had an opportunity with one singular medicine to treat uh, many of the symptoms of those disorders, that would be a wonderful thing for patients, uh, be wonderful for families and patients, and it wouldn't stand in the way of distinguishing between the different genetic variants. Uh, it would simply just allow for us to potentially impact on each of those, gene those genetic variants in a, in a uh, clinically meaningful way, which of course is, is our goal. So we believe that uh, the, the medicine that we are developing, which you'll hear more about uh, in this conference uh, from our founder of Grin Therapeutics, Pierre Andrea Muglia, what you'll hear is that uh, our molecule Redipradil, uh, without getting overly technical, is a NR2B negative allosteric modulator. That's fancy language that you don't, you don't necessarily need to, to be fluent in. But the bottom line is that it goes directly after the physiologic abnormality that is driven by these genetic variants. 
And by doing that, that's a unique thing in, in drug development to be able to go after the genetic variant across different genetic variants, but the impact of that genetic variant on brain function. That's what we think we can do with radipardil. You'll hear more technicals about that as we progress our discussion. But one of the things we wanted to uh, uh, announce today as part of this conference is our aspirations in uh, GRIN-related disorders beyond GRIN-2B. Our most significant activity to this point has been around GRIN-2B. Uh, because of what we learned about radipardil and because of what we believe we can learn further from our academic and research collaborations, is that radipardil may have an opportunity to work beyond simply GRIN2B and work in GRIN2A, work in GRIN1, other GRIN-related disorders. And again, it gets back to the fact that the physiologic function, the way the brain works when it is contending with these sorts of genetic variants actually has a lot of similarities about it. So we're quite hopeful that our expansion from GRIN2B into the other GRIN-related disorders will yield really encouraging and promising results for families and for patients. So uh, just a couple more comments I'd like to make. Uh, you'll hear, as I mentioned before, from Dr. Pierre-Andrea Muglia. Pierre-Andrea has been the inspiration of GRIN2B uh, at Grin, uh, Grin Therapeutics and the treatment of Grin2B, his commitment to this disorder over years now and his collaboration with clinical operators, with basic researchers, thinking creatively about how to better understand the disease process and do it in a very safe, very thoughtful way it is uh, someone who's going to be speaking to you in more detail about radipardil and about the molecule. Um, and then finally, we, we, we can't succeed. We as Grin Therapeutics and Nervati cannot succeed unless we do it in collaboration with you. This is an incredibly intimate experience. And again, as I said, very different from larger disorders where this level of intimacy often isn't there and often isn't required. But in order for us to succeed, we need to have your level of engagement remain very high and very robust. And we will do everything we possibly can to ensure that that engagement and collaboration is strong and healthy. And if we succeed in doing that, just engaging as team members, all of us rallying around the same cause, we have a strong uh, level of conviction that we will move the needle here meaningfully in managing this disorder, these series of disorders. And we're very excited to begin doing that work. Uh, we're going to be launching a clinical trial in the back half of this year, the amount of coordination and focus around coordinating that trial is incredible and inspirational, in part because of the involvement of the green community. So again, I'll end by thanking the conference organizers, Keith and his team, and thanking the patients and their families for being so committed and engaged. And we're just so honored to be a part of this experience with you and, and can submit to you, promise to you, that we take our work incredibly seriously and we are committed to this cause and we look forward to progressing it with you. So with that, Keith, I'll turn it back to you. Thank you, Bruce. Um, that's just such incredible news for our whole community and we truly are uh, grateful for the work that you're doing for, for our whole community. So thank you so much. I'm Denise Renner. I am the president of Kiergren uh, Foundation. Um, but I'm also Brett's mom. My son also has a mutation in the GRIN1 gene. He's uh, just eight years old this, this February. And we would like to thank all of our sponsors, including uh, GRIN Therapeutics and Variant, uh, Sage Therapeutics, uh, Simon Searchlight in the Autism Brain Net for, for your incredible support for this conference. And I'd also like to express appreciation for the people involved in planning this conference. Uh, for their, the time that they've dedicated to putting in um, their time and talents to making this event possible. Um, the Grin, uh, Cure Grin team, Megan Collins, our research coordinator, Lauren Williams, um, and Keith MacArthur have put in many, many hours, uh, as well as our uh, philanthropy, philanthropy Without Borders team um, that is uh, truly, truly uh, incredible organizers, Calliope Glaros, uh, uh, Clarissa Tanner, Gabriella Toast and Jennifer Miller. So thank you so much. 
um, as well as the conference programming advisors um, that have made this event so incredibly robust, Karen Averman, um, Anna Paduri, and Derek Bowie. So thank you so much for all that you've done for this conference. Um, if you've been on this journey for a while, you might have been told that there's nothing you can do. There is no cure, there is no treatments. But um, when you have a child with a rare disease or a family member, you'll do anything within your ability to help them. And that's exactly what these amazing family fundraisers and supporters have done for, for our community. They've gone out and they've asked their friends and families to support our mission, to share our hope, and support our efforts. And over the last two and a half years, these families have raised an incredible amount of support for our foundation that allows us to do what we do for the whole community. And we are incredibly grateful. Um, whether you've raised 50,000 or $50, it all helps. Uh, and throughout the next two days, you'll hear the incredible progress that we've made within the research community and um, how you can help as well. Um, because we can all help. There, there's it, not only can we all help, but it's gonna require all of us. So um, I want to just really uh, show our appreciation for these incredible uh, families that have allowed us to do um, what we've been able to do. We couldn't do it without you. And now for the funnest part of my job, I get to choose the winner for a uh, grand prize winner for our um, suite at our next in-person conference, which will take place in March of next year. It's going to be at the same, um, the, the same venue, the uh, Hotel Siena. And um, you can see the, the families that have uh, qualified, the number of entries that they have uh, qualified for, um, some of them many, many entrants. But I do want to point out that um, the LeBancs family, although they have qualified for 52 entries, they chose to forego it so that other families could participate in this chance. And now we have our uh, leftover <laughs> thing, uh, Easter basket. And you could see in here, like all of the entries that are um, qualified for a suite at the in-person conference next year, which I hope that you will all be able to attend. And now I have one lucky winner, Bernie, Team Tristan. Bernie Mullen, Team Tristan. I'm so excited. Bernie, that's incredible. So um, tomorrow you'll hear, hear um, more about how you can get involved and also you will have a chance to also win a hotel suite for the next in-person conference. So please stay with us. Mm -hmm.